presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Tampa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if your listeners don't get the gold report, they're, uh, they're missing out. I mean, you're... With your gold report, you just print in money. I love it. Uh, you're my best ad out there, Al. Let's go to uh, Jeff in New Jersey. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Great. Uh, hey, listen, I was calling to thank you. Uh, a few weeks ago, you were prompting on your show to fill out that uh, $10,000 uh, grant. Yes. So I filled it out, and um, just a couple days ago, I found $1,000 in my business checking account. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I owe it to you, because it, uh, if it wasn't for your prompting, I, I would have just assumed, you know, no way I would have gotten anything. So I, I wanted to thank you. No, we appreciate you growling a problem with us yet. Now. Tom O'Brien. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tom O'Brien on this Thursday, the 16th of November. Um, it's very interesting when you think about it. Look, the Dow's down 124, 34,866. After a move that went from 32,327 to 34,868, um, that's 2,400 points. Um, all we've managed here is that at a very, just on a purely technical overbought level, we've pulled back. But basically, it's only pulled back because Walmart is down, uh, Sharp is down 8%, down 14 points at 155. Uh, most of the other Dow stocks are not doing too badly. Uh, you've got a couple of, I'm just glancing here, uh, Travelers is up. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, it's up a little bit. You know, most of them are up a little bit or down a little bit. So let's go on because I'll first show you this. If for those of you who are not used to my work, I do the Tiger Technicians Hour every uh, every market day, 10 o'clock till 11. Uh, that's Eastern time. In the Chapman Wave methodology, and I have a newsletter called The Opening Call. In I look at this, uh, you get a starting point for, the, for whatever price you're following. And if it makes a peak A, the first peak and then pulls back and holds the left side low and then keeps going higher. Very quickly, it should go from a buy signal to a buy mode. The implication is that you should get at least four higher peaks going to the peak D, A, B, C, D. You can go E, F, and G, but D is your objective, and that's also where you can get your sharpest decline. Uh, look at this chart right here. I'm showing you. Here's travelers. There's a peak D above the 200 period moving average. Look at that sharp decline. Now it's peak A, peak B, peak C, another D. We're going to be watching this closely. So let's go back to the charts, and I'll explain the reason why I showed you that is that the Dow is in a buy mode. The stochastic is on the left side. This is the daily. This is the weekly. This is the monthly. The daily chart has got a very strong stochastic. Above 80% is good. Above 90% is fabulous. Above 95% is just perfect, especially if... The stochastic remains flat. If it just bounces up over 80% and then fails, be careful. But this is at 96%. The on-balance volume, the blue line is good. The little gray line, the relative strength is good. The nine period is over the 14 period, and the price is way above. And we've got a left side, right side price time match to that midpoint right there in October, which went almost to the day to break above the high that was made back in September. And here you are with 34,868 is the high yesterday pulling back a little bit. And as I said, Walmart is, is a fairly big part of that, although it's being ameliorated by ooh, Microsoft, which is up. Microsoft is up six, yeah, up six points at an all-time high, trading at 375.78. See, this is what's happening in this market. Whenever something's weak, something else takes its place. When everything's something strong, you get a little bit of a pullback from something that's weak. But look at this cup formation. It's broken out very nicely. So Microsoft is leading and you've got other stocks in the Dow that are, are playing catch up, but you've got a couple of leaders that are really counting. Uh, S&P, which also has Microsoft, is up. Uh, it makes an all-time high from 4103 October the uh, 27th. And we're going to have Tim uh, Ord on at, in the, uh, at the half hour, um, who made a fabulous call right on that Friday. And look at this. The S&P has gone from 4103 
to a high yesterday of 45.21. I would say that a 518-point uh, rally is not bad at all. And look at this slide. It's almost like, do I have to pull back? Okay, I'll pull back a little bit. But then, very quickly, we should go to a leg C. A leg C will be one penny above the high of yesterday. The QQQ, it's the same story. QQQ. Now, uh, Microsoft's in the Dow, Microsoft's in the S&P, Microsoft's in the QQQ, and the, and the XLK. So look at this. We're pulling back a little bit today. 387.75 is the high of yesterday. It went above the high, just barely above the high of 387. I think it was... Uh, did it make it 387.98? Oh, it hasn't broken above it yet. The high of uh, the week of uh, the 21st of July. Um, so it's acting extremely well. IWM, IWM is a Russell small caps. It's a Russell 2000. So we've got the daily chart right here on the left, the weekly chart in the middle, and the monthly chart on the right. You can see them going from the right. That arch formation says, wow, there's a lot of work to be able to use that as a bounce-off point. The arch formation here in the weekly chart says, well, there is a very nice bounce, but the 200-period moving average once again became a very important level and got repelled in the daily. But in the weekly, the daily is the same thing. Peak B pulling back a bit today, down 2.5 at 176.33. But the technicals are starting to improve a lot, and that just says – that IWM should try its best to, over the next week and a half to get to the 185, uh, 184 to 185 level. Now we need to go to the gold. Gold was plus 22. Is it still plus 22? Now it's plus 22.1 at 1980. Has it closed down or something? It's been at this level for almost all day. Well, you see this this pattern here. I call it the falling axe formation. It looks like a, the axe handle right here. Let me just show you the chart. This is one of the techniques we use in the Chapman Wave methodology. Look at that. It goes straight up, suddenly stalls, makes a lower highs, and much lower lows, and all of a sudden finds some support and tackles that declining, expanding cone resistance. If it can break above it and hold, that's going to be very positive because then you start looking at the left side peaks to challenge. Well, if we use that same analogy right here, you're looking at, if, the, if gold's able to close, I prefer not just bounce, but this time I'd like it to actually close above, I'll make it 1998, preferably get into the 208 area. If it can do that, then it's going to form a V-shape or a cup-shaped formation trying to get to the next high, which will be in the continuous contract of 2011. Key support, a lot of support here at the 1969 to 1960 area. But silver was a screamer. Look at that. It bounced way above the 200 period moving average. In a way, it's it's leading. Now, the question, I don't want to get into this now. I'll do it tomorrow in my show at 10 o'clock. It's Tiger Technician's Hour with uh, Friday's the Chapman Wave uh, an, um, analysis. We do things in a little bit more detail. Is this E or A? Well, that's the big question. But in the meantime, it's acting very well. The MACD is good. Stochastic's lagging a lot. And the weekly shows you it's got a lot of resistance in the weekly chart of about 20, just right on 24. So far, it's acting well. I'll be back because we want to talk about bonds. And the bonds are up today, up a point. Uh, we'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. Dow is down 138. S&P is down 2. See you in a few moments. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF nn.com call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 So, folks, if you're looking at the TLT, the TLT is the iShares Treasury 20-year uh, uh, Treasury bond ETF. The low that was made way back, I have to squeeze this monthly chart. Uh, here we go. Way back in uh, 2010 at about 88, uh, at about 8730, um, we had this huge move uh, to the upside. At that point, it felt huge because it went from 87 to 143, and then it pulls back to 111.90. Now, those are continuous contracts. And Dawn, those prices probably changed. 143.62. Oh, good. The prices are the same because when it gets smoothed out, the prices change. And then it came down, held 111, and went all the way to 179.70, March of 2020. That's where we got the fantastic turnaround in the stock market because bonds made the top. And that top came uh, with lower lows, did the H pattern, we call it the dreaded H because this arch formation at a peak A or B, if it fails, as it did there, um, takes out the left side low, in this case, 133.19 from, I think it was January or so of 2021, uh, that can go much lower, which it did. And it kept making the same pattern. The last one went to a lower low, and it went, do you remember 87.30? Well, 80, 82. 42 was the low so it actually took out that low the key support level so we haven't we've just barely got back to that that low of 87.30 back in 2010 so it says to me that in the in the bigger perspective we've been making low lows and lower highs and this is the first time that you can see that this on balance volume blue line in a monthly chart has given a really good v-shaped turnaround and that just says, it doesn't mean to say we've made the low in, in uh, bonds and yields are making their high. It says there's a chance that at this particular point, especially with this W formation in the monthly chart of the, uh, of the TLT, that you could start to see, and it goes back to the daily chart, that if there's a break ab above 91.50, get into this area right here, then all of a sudden, you've got yourself a very nice move because it's going above the 14 period exponential moving average, but it's a process. It's going to take quite a while. Uh, let's see. I just heard, I heard a ping and we have, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Uh, we're about to have Tim Ord 
And of course, you know, Tim, Tim gets uh, interviewed by uh, Tom every Tuesday and Thursday. But I've been listening to Tom, to Tim for a long time. When Tom and Tim used to discuss the market back in early 2000s, I would be listening. So I'm going to just quickly go to this chart and I'm going to say, hi, Tim, how are you? Hi. Hi. Yeah, first time we ever talked. I don't think I ever talked to you, so I don't think uh, so either. Glad to meet you. I, I've listened to you for wow well, since the early twenty two thousands, and I remember I used to be out uh, on the Newton North tennis court with my friend, and at about three o'clock, and I'd have my little portable radio, and I'd be listening to you and be, uh, being interviewed by Tom. I'd be playing tennis with my friend Jake, and. Uh, Soon after that, I became a, a host here at TFNN. So it's wonderful. Uh, Tim, I want to put your charts up right now. And I want to say Tim uh, has a newsletter called, there we go, The Old Oracle. Uh, if you want to just tell us briefly about it, because I know you want to go right to the charts. Uh, just if you want to start us off with that. Uh, with The Old Oracle? Or you, yeah. you want to start with yeah. the charts? Yeah. Just the, the, the this, exactly how people can reach you at uh, Tim. Okay, uh, I have a website, uh, www.ord-oracle.com, and um, that's where my website is. So uh, I, I do have a, um, a Twitter account, or uh, I think it's at ord oracle, all one word, dot com. Um, other than that, uh, I post some stuff around uh, stock charts every, I think, Tuesday or Thursday, or uh, Tuesday and Wednesdays. Sometimes, but um, so not a lot of stuff out there. So I don't advertise a lot. It's mo mostly word by mouth. So we we can actually move on to the charts if you want. Great, to. I've got chart number one, and if you'd like to start with that, I'd love to hear your analysis. All right. Um, anyhow, this this look. I'm going to look at the bigger picture and, and take it down to the smaller picture. And on the bigger picture, things have to happen uh, at significant lows you know and, and this chart kind of goes back and go back further but the further you go back you really can't really see what's going on but one of the requirements uh is for the the top windows the uh, uh, mccullen oscillator and um and what you need for a bottom is basically a, a selling climax then right after it you need a buying climax and there's different degrees of time as far as uh, uh there's smaller buyer, uh, there's smaller um, buying selling climax, and there's kind of intermediate terms uh, selling climaxes. So we're going to go through those. And this is uh, the summation index, or no, this is the oscillator one, which is the top window. And to get a selling climax on this indicator, you need to fall below minus 300. And the red lines across this chart, this chart goes back to uh, 2000, uh, mid 18, 2018. And going forward, and so it picks out, uh, identifies all the major lows that happen. For again, you need a selling climax, which is a minus 300 uh, oscillator. Then uh, you need a rally right after that to a plus 300. And once you get that, usually you're looking at a midterm low. This picked out the uh, 2019 low and also the the uh, COVID low. Uh, you had a selling climax to a buying climax, and in the current time frame, you actually had two uh, two uh, selling climaxes and two uh, two buying climaxes. You had one in October of 2022, which pretty much came at the exact low, and you had another one in the April period uh, uh, where the McCollin uh, Oscar fell below minus 300, then rallied above uh, 300. Uh, so that's that spurred out of the uh, – so intermediate term-wise, the McCollin oscillator uh, is, has gave bullish signs. Um, how long can these rallies last? Well, most of the time, they're at least multi-month, and sometimes they're multi-year. Uh, so since we got two of them, you know, it, it could be – the current rally could go on for a – we'll have some, you know, consolidations along the way. But in general, it's a bullish intermediate term sign. Uh, sure. Chart number two – Okay, here comes okay. chart. There's chart number two, and this is the chart that says New York Stock Exchange, McLaren Summation Index, and the confirmation, the bottoms and the tops. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. This this chart goes, uh, this is some Asia index. It actually, this is a little bit bigger time frame than McCollum Osclair. Uh, this is a some Asia index, which is uh, the Osclair added together, I guess you might say. So it, I, I went back further in time on this uh, indicator, went back to 2007. And the same things happen. You need a selling climax to a buying climax. If you notice all the way to the left there, there's a shaded area. Yes. And to get a selling climax on this summation index, you need a close below minus 700. And that shaded area shows the time you got down below 700. But what's missing here is a sign of strength or a McCollin or a summation X rather above plus 1,000. And so, so Tim, I, just I hear before, the music. Yeah, right. So let's just we'll take a break. I'm sure everyone like me are just totally fascinated. We'll be right back with Tim Ward. Dow's down 111. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. We're on with Tim Ward. We'll be right back after these messages. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Uh, Bowser Chop here, yeah, sitting here for Tom O'Brien. We're on with Tim Ord. Tim did a fabulous uh, workshop just the other day, uh, talking about, I think it was the six most important uh, technical tools that he uses. He's discussing some of them right here. We're on to chart number two. So, uh, Tim, if you can continue. All right. Uh, chart number two, on the far left corner, in other words, this is like the 2007, 2008 decline. Uh, you need the summation index to fall below minus 700, which is a selling climax. Then you need a uh, buying climax 
on this indicator to reach plus 1,000. And this whole thing should take two months or less. If you notice, okay. you got a bunch of selling climaxes going down into that 2008 low, but you yes. never got a buying climax until actually the bottom happened. So you have to see a sign of a weakness, then you have to see a sign of strength. So that decline, there was never a sign of strength. So the market kept going uh, down and, uh, you know, capitulating, I guess, to the downside and, until, the, you know, the downside was exhausted and you finally got a sign of strength. Now, if you go over into the current time frame here, uh, we had a uh, selling climax. Actually, that's the blue line this time around. Right. Uh, back in, looks like, about October of 2022. Then you got oh, a, there, yeah. a buying climax. I think the, the red one, that was probably November, December of, of 2022. So that pretty much marked the bottom. What's interesting here, on October 27th of last month, we got a uh, kind of a selling climax. We had a um, summation index that did get below minus 700. It got uh, 800, minus 800 and something. And so now, if we, we may get another buying climax or, um, you know, a surge or a sign of strength, which needs to happen within two months of October 27th, which would be December 27th. If okay. we get to, to plus 1,000, that would kind of be a double whammy here as far as the bigger picture or the bigger You're window. You're talking about a double whammy, normally, an upside whammy, right? Uh, For the upside. Pardon? For the upside, yeah. that is. Yeah, correct. R right. We hit, uh, you know, October 27th, we hit like minus 800. So two months at that is December 27th. And if we see plus 1,000, uh, that would bode well for next year. Because most of so, these signals are around, you know, they're multi-years, but most of them are at least a year, most time longer. Uh, you can see going back, they all met, they all came at major lows, and get two in a row is pretty rare. And right. what that means, I think, kind of adds to the picture. Will it do it? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But all right. it's in the cards. And, uh, so. and chart number three is. Yeah, chart number three is kind of a, a short-term picture. I do some stuff with the uh, VIX, and uh, the bottom window is is the VIX. And normally, right. if you if you're below uh, seventeen, a lot of times the market's in the trending mode, and that's that shaded uh, pink, uh, pink right. area. And right now we're around fourteen or so, and uh, the market's kind of going up here. And what I look for. Uh, uh, it's divergences. Uh, the middle window, or the second window up from the bottom, is yep. the SPX VIX ratio. Right. And a lot of times, this ratio will diverge. In other words, the S&Ps will make higher highs, and this ratio will make lower highs. And if you go back in time, you can see what happened. Uh, matter of fact, going into that, uh, uh, oh, that uh, late 2022 high. The yep. S&Ps were making higher highs, and that ratio was making lower highs. So that was the first, it's one of the reasons why I got out of the market because of this. Uh, then, and in April of this year, uh, the market was kind of trending sideways uh, around that 40, it looks like about 41, 4200 on yep. the SPX. And this ratio is making higher highs. That's a bullish uh, situation. So the market broke out to the upside. And right now, uh, we really don't have any virgins. There's, uh, uh, to speak of, other than there's a positive version because the VIX is below 17, suggesting that the market's in the trending mode. Right. But uh, far far as the S&Ps, we haven't really touched the previous high yet, and the SPX VIX ratio uh, is, is not really confirming or denying. Is I just wanted to point out, it's not really saying anything bearish here, but it's not saying anything bullish either. But you know, it's uh, at the moment. I see no really bearish signs here. So it's a kind uh, of a, a status quo, and the last signal will remain in, in in effect. Is that kind of how you see it? You're right. Yeah, just you know, we we had a pullback, which I did get out of the out of, at the July top, and I got long again at that actually the day of the bottom, which is I think I October remember. 27th. That was terrific, great. And point. I've been yes. long since, and I don't see a reason to be out of the market. Uh, if you want to go to real short term, let's go to chart four real quick. Got it right here. Yes. All right. This is really the short term. It kind of um, this is uh, 
the second window down from the top is the SPX tilt ratio. So it's uh, SPs compared to the bond market. And uh, the top window is the RS10 period, 10 day RSI for that ratio. Okay. And uh, when the ratio goes up too fast, uh, which is all those blue lines across the, the, uh, the chart here, which is yep. which means the RSI is above 70, normally you get short-term pullbacks. And I just want to point out that even though this market just screened up here over the last couple of weeks, oh, look at this that. ratio pretty much Hardly stayed moved. around 50. Yeah, it's uh, so, hardly moved. Yeah, That's so it's, 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 it's a little bit unusual. So it's not really showing any signs on this relationship to be overbought or anything. Uh, so, you know, can the market go down? It doesn't pick out every top, but uh, I guess when it does give a, a warning, that's usually pretty accurate. So, and right now, you know, the, again, the market just screamed up here, and this ratio has stayed pretty much uh, neutral, staying around 50. So on a that's short-term a basis sign. here, this doesn't seem to be any, yeah, I guess, any fear with this ratio. So another reason why I'm kind of hanging along. Uh, we can go to chart five real quick. Uh, four, five is over here. Got it. There it is. All right. Um, okay, the top window is the SPY VIX ratio. Uh, if this ratio is going up along with the S&Ps, which it is right now, that's usually a bullish sign. If you got, if you look back at the uh, uh, going into that July high, you know, it's the S, which is that circled. Uh, area yes, right the there with a the pink right. area uh the sps were going up and that ratio was it was it was making lower or higher lows and that was a, a divergence and so uh, suggesting that rally is not going to continue which it didn't and so that was kind of a warning sign and matter of fact you can see uh, go back to the other light blue area back in that uh february to april may period Yes. Uh, the SPs were going sideways, and this ratio was making lower lows, and that yes. was a bullish sign. Or excuse me, the ratio was making higher lows, and that was a bullish sign suggesting the rally is going to go up. And right now, which is way to the right, and it's a boxed-in red uh, square area. Yes. Got it. Uh, there's no divergence here. Uh, the SPs are going up, and this ratio is going up. So, uh, to me, uh, there's no real danger here. At least not yet. So that's great. Well, I think we've got a break coming up. If you would like, we can do. I'd like to come back to do the final one, uh, chart right. number six. Uh, we, we, could you hold on? Yeah, we can do that. Great. We'll be back, folks. Dow is now down only eighty six, and the S and P has just flipped positive to a plus two. And we'll be right back. The forty five twenty level that I spoke about for the E mini is just being touched. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades 
At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Hi, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman sitting in uh, for Tom O'Brien, and let me get back to the charts. We've got uh, Tim Ord on the line, and I just, I had it right here. There it is. Okay, so Tim, we've got this last chart. And this is a fascinating one because it's got the RSI for infl inflation deflation ratio. <clears throat> right. Um, okay. This uh, this is a weekly chart goes back to 2015, and this is uh, Marty Pring. He created this inflation deflation ratio. Uh, he's an old timer. Uh, he goes right. way back when. Uh, so I mess with this. Inflation deflation ratio on the daily it doesn't say a doesn't seem to say a lot on the daily, but on the the weekly, it really kind of shines here. Uh, but anyhow, all they did was uh, put an RSI uh, to this inflation deflation ratio, and that's every time that ratio got below say, thirty, I uh, just wanted and, to say that's a relative strength indicator. Sorry, just wanted to clarify that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, and it's, well, anyhow, if you notice, these these signals are pretty rare. Uh, you get maybe one a year. You know, sometimes you go uh, like 2020, 2022. You got well, you got you know that was a two year period. But yeah. usually, you get maybe one a year. And then um, there's only one failure. That failure, no, that was a high. Actually, there's really no failures in this. Uh, we did have uh, two of them in 2016. You got one, and went market flip sideways. That's way to the left of the chart. Then you got another one uh, later in the year. Then the market just screamed up for about six, seven months. But mm -hmm. anyhow, last week the RSI of this ratio closed at uh, 28 and change. I don't remember exact what number it was, but you need to close below 30. Then you need to close above 30 to get the signal. And we did close above 30 last. Friday at 28 and change. And right now, uh, I did this chart earlier today. We're at 37 on the RSI. Oh. That's a weekly chart. So you need the weekly to close above 30, which is tomorrow. Oh, so most likely, this uh, will be triggered uh, tomorrow. And uh, all the blue lines across uh, the area there are when uh, that cell signal triggered. Is you know, is it perfect? It comes awful close to all the lows, you know, actually the Very low in, good, on the yes. current situation probably came in October, but we're not going to get the signal until November here, which is right. fine. But uh, they all uh, were pretty good signals in the past. And sometimes when the RSI uh, gets above uh, 70, you know, they can pick out short-term or intermediate-term highs. And that's the red lines across the chart shows where those signals are indicated. But... Um, Anyhow, once these signals are triggered, they're usually multi-month, if not longer. Oh, that's uh, so very exciting. Good. What, yeah. So what this suggests, we, you know, we're, we're going to have a, a multi-month rally that probably will last into next year sometime. So, Good. again, these signals are pretty rare. You get maybe once a year, and we're getting one right now. Well, tomorrow, 
uh, we may get one. So unless the market crashes or something, I don't think that's happening. So, Good. And just but, briefly, uh, I'd like to touch on this. You've got the XAU weekly and you've got the GDX weekly. Yeah, and that's where those signals occurred on the blue lines there. So, um, um, you know, they're, they're pretty good. You know, there was, um, um, I mean, if, if you just painted, you know, if you just took this signal and nothing else, uh, you've been you've been pretty good. It, it does a lot better at bottom. Seems like this this indicator, when it does go down, it goes down really fast, and that's how you get the signals going. It does okay at tops, but it doesn't really time. Uh, you know, if you look at the red lines there, uh, sometimes they came near high, sometimes they didn't. But they all came at at least consolidation phases. So, for instance, we do go, uh, get a signal here tomorrow, and you rally really strongly here. It will consider, and the RSI gets above 70, it will warn you at least you got a consolidation coming. That would be a multi-week consolidation. Will it be a top? That's not necessarily true. Uh, that top may come okay. later. But uh, uh, it's a good indicator. Nobody uses it. And uh, uh, so, anyhow, tomorrow, you know, probably the, the big low came in October, um, and we had some actually signals of a different method coming in there. And uh, this looked like it was going to be like a double bottom boat. If you look through the far right of the chart there, we're just making a higher low. And so this pattern, it kind of looks like a head and shoulders bottom on GDX and XAU, where the neckline on the XAU is probably right around that 117 area. And on, on uh, GDX, it looks like the neckline may come right around close to that 30 area. So um, that's probably what's going to happen here. So we don't have it shown, too, but the, the bullish percent index for the gold miners index is also rising. It's, it's minus 10 here about a month, or not minus 10, but 10. In other words, uh, 10% of the stocks in the gold miners index were on buy signal. And that was a couple of weeks, or about three weeks ago. And currently, there's about 25% of the stocks in the gold miners index are on buy signals. So that, which you need to happen, you need the bullish percent index to rise to really get a, a, a strong market because as more stocks become on buy signals, the more, the more stronger that index is becoming, and that's what's happening here on the gold miners index. So, uh, a lot of stocks now, a lot of stocks are flipping to buy signals on this rally. So, that's another bullish sign. So, how good it's going to be, I don't know, uh, but it should be a, at least a multi-month rally. That you know, probably well, so go to far, April, May. with the dollar pulling back, uh, that's that's also helping gold, and gold seems to have led, and the GDX seems to be following. I personally I like to see the GDX leading gold, but I think it's playing catch up for sure. Yeah, actually, I watched that ratio, the XAU to gold ratio, or the GDX to GL ratio. You know, it it performed dismal here over the last couple of months or last right. several months. Actually, over the last six months, it just really hasn't performed at all. And uh, maybe that tide will be turning because most bull markets, the gold stocks lead the gold. And over the last several months, that's not the case. Gold has been that's leading, right. in other words, outperforming the gold stocks. And that needs to be reversed here. So I kind of watched that ratio real close. And the ratio is like, you know, all-time lows. Uh, it really can't get any worse than where it is. And so uh, a lot of these penny stocks at some point are going to turn into, you know, I think dollar stocks at least that'll be, at some that'll point. That'll be very exciting, so, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm hope, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but uh, the last time something like that happened was basically at the 2000 low in right. uh, gold in the gold market. I think the where that ratio was outperformed gold, you know, all the way up. So right. maybe we'll get lucky in this time around. We'll have to wait well, that'll and see. Be, that'll be very exciting, certainly. So, yeah. Tim, I, I want to thank you very much. I've been waiting for a long time to be able to uh, have a chance to speak with you. It's a pleasure on my part. Thank you very much. And fabulous work. And I know people who did the workshop really enjoyed it. And that workshop, folks, is still up on the archive if you want to look at it. Um, really appreciate it. So, Tim, thank you very much. And uh, Tom will be speaking thank you. to you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, folks, we'll be back. Dow's now down 63 and the S&P's up uh, 5. Very, uh, very good turnaround. We'll be back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So uh, let me just show you this, because if you're, if you're interested, tomorrow in my show, 10 o'clock to 11, Tiger Technicians, I do it live. I'll show you how these patterns work, how the particular moving averages can keep you in a trade much longer than you would expect. And also in Chapman Wave, always looking for a peak D. That's where other things can happen. Look, here's a peak D. There's a one minute, e minute chart. It went up, 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 went to another peak D, and now it's stalling. But you're only able to see in the uh, 10 minute chart, is it still going to do that overnight? We'll see what happens. So the question comes in, what exa where exactly are we? So then let me just do the summation real quickly. So in the TLT, if the TLT, the bonds, as, as Tim was uh, using, uh, talking about it as one of his tools, is at 89.56. If yields can come down further with bonds going into the 92s, if uh, by about Wednesday of next week, if 92.50 is hit just even once, that's really important. It'll be the first time the 14 period exponential moving average has been brought, pierced uh, since it went negative way back. Look at that since, oh my, since May of this year when it was up in the 106 area, and here it is at 89. So that's going to be very important, and 87 is key support. Looking at the Dow, 
This this is going to be a peak B. I don't know what we can do in the next few minutes, but it certainly won't make a new leg to the upside. So this is a peak B. I'm expecting a higher leg C than a peak C, and then a higher leg D. And then we have to do an analysis and say, can we continue? Is this a time for a deep, uh, you know, a bit of a breather? We'll see what happens. S and P exactly the same thing. Days young. We have still got a few minutes to go. But I don't think it's going to get to uh, yesterday's high. So this could very well be a peak B. If there is just a nominal C above both the Dow, the S&P, and the Qs, just like a hair above uh, yesterday's high in the next day or two, and then it pulls back, that's where you've got to be careful when you go quickly from a B to a C, but it's only a minor uh, pickup. But it's a quick C to from a D to an E. That's, that's exciting. So I'm expecting higher highs going into next week. A uh, very good support at this particular point. And I'm just going to say have a wonderful rest of the day. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. I'll be back uh, for my show tomorrow at 11. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.